My grandmother, Daisy Dooley Marshall, lied and told everyone she was born in St. Louis, Missouri. She was not, and so I finally took a genealogy trip to the Deep South, where I found out where she really lived. The Anniston Public Library set out all of their materials for the Borders and Cunningham's family. It was wonderful researching there. This actually can happen where you call and say you're going to be coming to the public library at a certain day and time and they pull out all these documents that help your search and here I am in Anniston, Alabama and it happened. The man back there coming towards us pulled all these documents for me with the family file, the slave owner's family file, all these books. Look at all this. Oh, really? Made copies. Oh, yeah, this, this is how you hope it's going to be. I can be here all day and learn about the slave owner and our family's relationship to him. Awesome. Oh my goodness. This is a um, book. Except I, I haven't seen it. Okay. There's one for each okay. of the 67 counties in Alabama. Okay. And right here's where you need to look. Okay. And I didn't That's know, you didn't say anything about this. This oh, is a abstract 1844 tax assessment book. Okay. Where so he's in there. You know. Excellent. This, just found Ooh. this morning, is, uh, now this is actual oh. out of the courthouse. Oh. And here is John Borders. Uh, I, you may have seen that, mm. or it may be online somewhere. I don't That's know. That's wonderful. But I found this. To touch it though. It's yeah. Really amazing. See all that right there? Mm -hmm. That is out. This is out of probate records that we have on microfilm. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. Now, and I had to. It's, uh, it was so big on the film. I had to make two <laughs> copies for each page. Oh, God. But that's what that is. So Thank you can you. just have at it. And now this is. Um, you said something about this book. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, it's good, it's good, but I prefer I stopped at the Harmony Baptist Church where the Borders slaves built this amazing place and their family is buried right here on Chocoloca Road. All right, another dream come true. I'm in Alabama, Calhoun County, Alabama, Chocoloco Valley, and this is where my third great-grandmother and second great-grandmother were enslaved by the Borders, John Borders family. There's the plantation house back there, and I'm here all day visiting, learning about the house, learning about slaves Levick and Griff Borders who had a house right here in this area, a two-story house, and they were the slaves who built the entire home over there, and they built houses for the children of the John Borders family. They built the Harmony Church, which is just down the street over here. I looked at that yesterday. It's incredible. It's incredible. The mastery of these individuals. Now, there were probably four other slave houses on this side of the road. Um, the house itself, the slave house itself, doesn't have enough room to handle all the people that supposedly were living there in 1850 and 1860. So there must have been some overflow. There's also a really big barn. I, I know you can't see it right this way. Uh, I'll go and explore that later with the current owner of the house. So, it's amazing. Go ahead and take a genealogy tour if you can, because the, con the context cannot be read about. Sometimes you just have to be here and touch it, and see it, and smell it, and hear it. Kathy Kanika Marshall, out for now. One of my Facebook friends, and likely a cousin, 
Debbie Walker told me a fantastic story about my second and third great grandmother. Second great grandmother's name was Fanny. She was born around 1856. So when she was about six years old, she's playing out in front of the plantation. That's the plantation house back there. She's playing out in front. Her mom's in the kitchen, which is that bricked in building right there. And her mom's making lunch for the master, master's family at least. And she looks out the window and she notices that her daughter Fanny is being lifted up by some guy in a uniform. Somebody had come through the fence lifted up her daughter, put her on the fence, and said, hold the gate open for my men to come through. And an army, well, not an army, but a number of soldiers, Union soldiers, came in. And of course, Mama Bear over there, she runs out and said, what are you doing with my daughter? And the man says, my men are hungry. I need some food, fix us some lunch. And she said, I don't think my master's gonna like that. You best leave. And the soldier says, you don't have a master anymore. For you see, it was 1863, and the Emancipation Proclamation had just been signed. And the soldier said, you are all free. You don't have a master. You can make your own decisions and your own choice. So I'm looking at this property, wondering if where that road is, is where the fence once was. Or was it this fence that the soldiers may have come through, offering freedom to the slaves who worked here on this property. There were about a hundred slaves owned by Borders, John Borders and his family. And they were now free. Imagine, imagine that feeling on that day in 1863. Oh, I'm 50 years old and I'm two states away, so I'm going to do it. <laughs> but anyway, it's 91, so it's getting close to 30 years. What brought you here? We lived here. We bought the land. And they said the house was of no value and needed to be bulldozed. And so we were, we, nobody could even find a key. So I can't remember whether we found the key or broke in or what. <laughs> but, um, I saw that mantle in the kitchen, and I said, there's something we got to bug out about this house. So we've been researching. Yeah, uh -huh. so then we found out how special it really was. But, um, well, but well. Um, I have a dog in this bedroom that um, I'll put out in a little bit. I didn't know whether um, she's, it just upsets her to have strangers or something. So. A beautiful job restoring this place. Well, you know, I, I read that they had actually put this aluminum. Side they had. They had <gasps> You're kidding. Oh my god. And there was this horrible, horrible thing across the back. Somehow, I can't even remember. Somehow there was a walkway through here and this great big. I don't. I'll show you. This is just terrible. Are you familiar with the uh, pictures that were taken? Yes, I have them from the library. I've got them on the back somewhere. You've probably seen those. Yeah. But you know, Harvey was the one that. You helped. Oh, oh yeah. I was just telling her, I can't remember the name of the man who's written that. Wow. I even compiled that book on Hab Study. See the steps going up to the second floor. So, That's the only thing I know about. Uh, I would give anything, could. and I'm sure he's not alive anymore. But yeah, that would be neat. Even just pointing the mm -hmm. direction that you recall from the picture well, would be lot across the street. Would be yeah. great. That's so, the, uh, oh, you mean how much acreage do you have here? Okay, the lot right across the street there would be where Levick and Griff lived. They had a two-story house. One of them lived upstairs. One of them lived downstairs. How much did was was
very tall risers on this staircase. And seven and a half foot ceilings upstairs. Or sawmill? Mm -hmm. oh, oh, or what okay. we think is. Where they cut all the wood. It's, it's it was the 1840s, right? Mm -hmm. um, or late 30s. Late 30s. 30s. Yeah. Nobody should have said that. Uh, the northern troops burned the records for 1840. Ah. So this mantle was once painted yellow, like kind of a light, a creamy yellow, not a deep yellow, but a creamy with white underneath, and also underneath the cabinet. That was yellow before they came. On the far side of the kitchen, so who knows if this is where they actually once had a clothes line for all the clothes that had to be washed. Okay, this was probably the well. And Susan says there are many wells in this area, all over the place. Lots of water, no shortage of. What's that? Oh, no. petrified? petrified? Petrified. And of course that doesn't happen. Wow. But so they, in this we, house? Yeah, was the we did legend? find this pipe. Oh, you're not. Look and at you. Oh my god. I gosh. had all this stuff in that other room. Ah. And all all ended up in here. So I was oh so my gosh. organized. Oh, well. But it, no, I'm just, I'm oh kidding. You know, I'm not. Um, oh, I'm going to hold that. You want me to flatten it out a little or, or not? So that's what it's they're that's clay pipes, and I this when I, I'm a I garden and I find little pieces of it. I saved them for a long time. Oh, then I, you don't need a gym membership with this puppy. <laughs> yeah, girl. Wow. So they had running water back in the day. Which I should imagine. Well, I don't you, know how common it like, was or wasn't. I don't know. What does it feel like, terracotta? It was fall, and I looked up there and I said, there is that smokehouse. It's brick for brick for this, wow. like this house. This and, and you can see, you can see it, the walls starting to uh, oh, deteriorate. Yeah. Uh -huh. And they <laughs> tore this say. down and built, a bar the people, some bunch that owned it, tore it down and built. Don't tell anyone that we're trespassing on this land. But this is a smokehouse that was similar to the one that John Borders had at his house at some point. Probably also built by Griff and Levick Borders. <laughs> 